things have I spoken unto you that in me might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. After congressional vote to end government shutdown, House stenographer Diane Reedy bravely ends 18-year career in the following manner. He will not be mocked. He will not be mocked. Don't touch me. He will not be mocked. The greatest deception here is this is not one nation under God. It never was. Had it been, it would not have been. No. It would not have been. The Constitution would not have been written by free masons. They go against God. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. Praise be to God, Lord Jesus Christ. Wednesday was a long day for lawmakers and everyone else who was working on Capitol Hill. Well, one of the House stenographers reached her breaking point, apparently. She stormed the floor while members were voting. Lawmakers said she was yelling about the House being divided and the devil. Reedy was questioned by police. She was then taken to the hospital to be evaluated. Following the outburst, the woman was interviewed by U.S. Capitol Police and then taken to a Washington area hospital for a mental health evaluation. Her name is Diane Reedy and is well known to House lawmakers as one of the stenographers who regularly works on the House of Representatives floor. We're told she walked up to the podium below the presiding officer and asked if the microphones were on. She then began saying things like, thus spoke the Lord, and this is not the Lord's work. Also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And when they bring you unto the synagogues, and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer, or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. She's a stenographer who works regularly on the floor. Uh, Ileana Ross Leighton described her as normally a very gentle soul, and so it really shocked everybody when things are done by the book on the floor of the House, and suddenly there was this outburst at a critical time with this vote tonight. Yeah, very strange. Mike, thank you. She said, thus spoke the Lord, and this is not the Lord's work, is what she said at the microphones. It was a surreal moment Wednesday night when stenographer Diane Reedy had her outburst on the House floor. She rushed the dais and started shouting as members were finishing voting on the bill to reopen the government and avoid bumping up against the debt ceiling. No one knew why this, in, her, in the words of her husband, sweet, level-headed woman was suddenly scolding Congress, screaming that a House divided will not stand. But now Reedy's saying... God made her do it. In a statement to Fox News, she said, for the past two and a half weeks, the Holy Spirit has been waking me up in the middle of the night and preparing me through my reluctance and doubt to deliver a message in the House chamber, and that is what I did last night. And so, you know, this was a dying to my flesh. I mean, every day for about uh, three days before, I just my prayer to God was just crucify my flesh because I cannot do this. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to do it, um, and, I, and I cannot do this in my flesh. And um, every day was a, a little, was just more and more dying to the flesh, and, and things were intensifying at the end. Spiritual warfare was intensifying at the end. Um, uh, and, and everything that I was losing, I mean, I thought that I was going to lose my family. I thought that I was going to lose my freedom. I thought, you know, I could end up in prison. I, I didn't know. I just... I, I didn't know, and so a lot of this was grieving um, what was to come. I knew I'd lose my job, 
but I felt it was, you know, um, you know, God, you're, you've got me because this is this is your thing. This is not anything that I want to do. You know, I'm not a protester. I'm not a um, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. You know, this is not anything that I had a dog in this fight. Um, so the last day, the day of the of the vote, um, as it turns out. I knew that I would be the one to take the vote. I knew that God was going to speak between the two votes or at the end of that vote. Um, there was no way for me to know that. We don't get assigned votes. We're assigned in a rotation. So I, I had a one in seven chance of being in the position that I was in at the moment I was in the position. And um, right up until the end, I just was still fighting it. Again, Lord, crucify my crucify my flesh. I've got to be just, this is, you know, led by the Holy Spirit completely. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Congresswoman Ileana Ross Leighton, who was presiding at the time, then hammered the gavel and tried to quiet her. Reedy then said something about the devil. This was a moment late night on a big night here on Capitol Hill that genuinely seemed to stun lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. Megan? All right, Mike, thank you. Joining me now, Chad Pergram. He's our Fox News senior Capitol Hill producer. He was there seconds after this happened and spoke with some of the members who watched it unfold. So it sounds like a sad incident. It sounds like this person may have had some sort of a mental health episode. You know, there were a lot of references about God, uh, you know, during her, her rant uh, from the dais. And when they pulled her out into the hall uh, there and tried to take her down the elevator, she's very religious and people were very concerned here. There's a lot of people here on Capitol Hill who talk with her. She always has a smiling disposition. And, you know, we see a lot of strange things on Capitol Hill. It's not strange that we see a protest outside the Capitol. Once in a while, there's a protest inside the House chamber. But to have a protest in the middle of such a big vote as the vote was coming to a close, and no less for it to be someone who works here, I don't think I've ever seen that in all the years that I've covered Capitol Hill. And that's what was so confusing. And especially to have somebody run up to the dais. Remember, this is the very place where the president speaks when he comes to Capitol Hill to deliver the State of the Union. Right. What I mean, you have to ask about uh, so the security measures and only the ones that are made public. But, you know, is there a screening process that these people have to go through? Those people who we entrust to work so close to our lawmakers? The whole kingdom of the adversary is shaken to its foundations by one servant of the Lord standing boldly and saying, thus saith the Lord. Remember that. Their whole purpose throughout history has been to teach a small number of people how to become adept at controlling everyone else and presenting their societies as desirable to the profane so that you'll go knock on the door and say, hey, can I be a member and be initiated with the promise of learning some great secret. What is that secret? The secret is how to control everybody else. And you never understand how to control everybody else until you get to the top of this pyramid of initiation. Most people never make it past the third step. All above that are carefully chosen. Congratulations to you chosen ones. And I am calling you the chosen ones because you have been chosen in many ways. Today you mark your graduation, which has come during, during the restructuring of time and of science, of our own national will, and of a worldwide commonwealth. During well, the great reset, the great reboot, you will have seen the movie and you will know how it ends. You're joining in the work that has to be done. You chosen ones are going to form the new structures and to find the new realities and make the new world, the world after all that we have been through. And the future is always uncertain, 
But we who celebrate what you have done, who celebrate all of your achievements, we are certain of one thing on this day. You will not let us down. Thank you. Congratulations. Way to go. Who is the identity of this executioner? If you look closely, you will see that this terrifying character is wearing something around his waist. The date is the 16th of February, 2010. And this is a bit of an unusual video presentation here. Our source attended a number of meetings with senior masons. While many of these were interesting, they were routine by City of London standards. They were discussing financial affairs and so on and so forth. And then in the June 2005, he attended another meeting that he thought was going to be a routine meeting, but actually this was something rather unusual. And he realized it was unusual as soon as he arrived. In fact, he felt it was an accident that he was there. He shouldn't really have been there. He didn't know what was happening. The people there were Masons, there were senior Masons, including senior politicians who most people in the UK would recognize by name. The chief of police was there, representatives from the church, representatives from the military. What they were talking about was a plan that had clearly been made a long time ago. And what they were discussing was they were discussing the implementation of this plan. They were discussing how things were going whether they were on track or not. They were talking about China and how powerful China was getting, both militarily and financially. China was getting too strong too quickly. Other things that were discussed were, for example, the coming financial crash, the centralization of resources, everything that we saw starting to happen in October 2008. They were planning that and referring to it in their meeting in June 2005. There was clearly a rollout of some plan here and he was quite shocked the more that he heard and when he really realized what was happening he was extremely shocked. Things are being set up in many of the Western countries for there to be heavy controls over populations, martial law, increased powers on security forces who are not just the army or the police but in Britain for example our source said that he knew he absolutely knew personally for a fact that a very large number of private security people, their powers were being increased to give them the ability to arrest people, the ability to detain, the ability to handle riots in streets. And here we're talking about just regular people working in private security. And uh, last year we heard President Obama talking about how he wanted to have a sort of national guard at home in America ready to handle this kind of thing. There are a lot of indicators that this is being set up. And then the next thing that happens in this chess game that's being played is that biological weapons are released on China. You heard this being discussed in this meeting. They will release a flu-like virus that will be genetically targeted against the Chinese population. It's designed to spread like wildfire and to knock out a large number of the Chinese people. And these people in this meeting were laughing about this. They said, China will catch a cold. Those were their words. China will catch a cold. And after that, then what effectively will be a kind of plague will actually spread right across the world to the West as well. Our source was not clear whether this was a Chinese retaliation or whether the thing would just spread out of control in the way that it would be very understandable if it did, whether it's racially targeted or not, these things actually mutate. So now you've got a situation, there's a pandemic that really is sweeping across the world and you've got this totalitarian military lockdown in all the governments in the Western worlds because everyone's going to be in panic about all of this. The idea is that as the world looks upon this with horror, then they will demand from their governments that 
there are heavy controls over travel, over communication, over people who meet, over people who protest in the streets. And because people will be driven into fear by this, they'll request and demand and insist on heavy controls from their governments, which will be justified. And this is where you're going to kind of get the martial law situation in all the Western countries. It's intended as a justification. All of this is just the start of something. And that is a plan to intentionally collapse Western society. These are men with a radical revolutionary agenda throughout the entire world because they worship and follow a radical revolutionary deity. The first to have led a revolt against the Most High Lord. David Crowley knew something and he was trying to warn the people the ones behind the FEMA death camps, the guillotines, and the detention of Americans, it's the Freemasons. They're planning a second American revolution. Is it really that hard to understand? Yeah. That if you've got the money, you're not going to let it go? Yeah. And if you've got the money, people are going to come to you with their mm. ideas? So you get the jump on everybody else, and if yes. you decide not to publish that idea, yeah. and that idea is handy for your business. Yeah. It's, I mean, is it really that far-fetched? I mean, is it that hard mm. for people to understand that if you've got an advantage every mm. step of the way, that you're mm. going to end up in charge? Yeah. The man in the street is mm. uneasy. He yeah, doesn't yeah. know why he's uneasy. He knows there's yes. a monster coming, but doesn't even know what it is. But these individuals are so powerful, mm. and I mean powerful, not rich. They're mm. so powerful because of their wealth. Mm. that when they remove that wealth from any area, that area collapses. And, and the world is, a, is an area. Mm. Yeah. But then we go on to the subject of money. Money is a control system. It's nothing to do with money. It's not, money is, is, is nothing. It's a machine yes. for picking people out. The more paper you get together, and by that I mean money, to do that you have to be a type of individual. If you're, um, depending on what field you're in, you know, mm. um, let's say you're particularly good at acting and you haven't been discovered and you land a plum roll and you are paid two million pounds to do it and then you go and invest that two million pounds rather than go and buy yourself a house and mm. live the life mm. you go and invest that in a business mm. and that nets you 14 million pounds yeah and then you invest that and then you yeah. get another roll yeah um this will be noticed and as yeah. your accumulation gets to a point um you will be approached Yes. And the reason you'll be approached is because to get that kind of money together, everyone in the street will tell you you're not a nice guy. You don't yeah. get that way mm. by being a nice guy. Mm. You can get inherited money and be mm. a nice guy and you won't have it very long. Or you could be very, very smart. You don't have to play dirty to get money, do you? Uh, do yes, you? you do. You do? Yeah, I think you do, yeah. Okay. And uh, that's a personal opinion and it's okay. also, and that is a fact. It's my personal opinion, but mm. it's also a fact. If you want to hang on your money, uh, you're going to have to develop a thicker skin. And in developing mm. that thicker skin, you will understand what they are going to explain to you. Okay. It will make you susceptible. You mm. have to. Okay. Or just give your money away. Okay. Which I've is never to. going to happen. Because why would you try to accumulate it in the first place? Yes, right. You, you could put a word on it and say greed, but it's far more complex than that. Okay. Insecurity. People, look at me, I came mm. from a very weak background mm. and I can assure you that getting money together was, was a way of uh, increasing my security. And you can look at uh, actors, athletes, businessmen, um, any walk of life. Mm. The, they are judged on what? Uh, anyone that matters, let's put it that way, anyone that mm. matters to that individual will judge them on how much money they're making. Yes. And that's mm. literally, you know, if you're today's cheese, you're great, I'll talk to you. Yeah. If you're three day old, I don't want to know because you've run out of money. I understand that. Money goes to money. You heard that saying before? Oh, yeah. yeah. There are financial games being played of all kinds, and they're taking the chips back off the table and so on. So people are saying, hey, where all the chips have gone, etc. What else is happening? That's, that's sort of old news. Yeah, exactly. as, as yeah, you said, that's sort of everyone things. knows. Yeah. And that's something that's been happening for a little while now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so what's coming at us? What changes might we see in the world, on the planet, in the next few years? And there's been a lot of disinformation of course, that's yeah. been injected into the alternative community to provide people a, a, a way of chasing their tails forever and not looking at the real issues. Uh, the alternative media. 
Yes. Uh, they're very happy for you to do what you're doing. The crazier the story, the, 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 the more rolls of laughter are heard. Okay. And they have been watched. Yes. Right. Over cigars and whiskey. I've seen them roll with laughter over things. Because sometimes mm. you get things right. Yes. Individuals have got it right, right on the money mm. in the total wrong context. Okay. So that is very funny. Yes. From this point of view. It's sometimes it's regarded as entertainment. Ah, it's just like, yeah, so yeah. look at what you this... You guys are out regarded as entertainment. Yeah. yeah, that's a very fair comment. Yeah. Look at what this Twitter because is Because I don't consider you a threat. What you don't want is anyone being taken seriously. What you don't want is someone who's going to coherently put an argument together, is willing to listen to the discourse, mm -hmm. and come back with a different version, mm -hmm. adapted, because that's dialogue and that's, that's productive. Mm -hmm. They don't want that. Okay. They want uh, a guy with his hair tied up in ponytails with a white line painted across his face doing an Indian rain dance and then trying to tell you something about what's going to happen in 2012. They okay. want that. Yes, and because the spirits are telling him. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah, he's got tinfoil on his head. Great guy. All right. All right. So anyone who... who well, there's something about tinfoil that we were talking about which is quite pre relevant, isn't there? But we, that's, another quest, that's another situation altogether. All of this was in the context of what's coming down the pike at us over the next few years. Yeah. And then you started off, which I did appreciate, saying, well, actually, first of all, let's get the nonsense out of the way. Mm. And you're saying that in the alternative media, there's a lot of nonsense. And from the inside, the whole thing is seen as a bit of a comedy show most of the time. Yeah. It's like, look and the, how... And the times it isn't taken as a comedy show is when they actually take your ideas on. Because so every now and then, some crackpot will come up with an idea that actually flies. Okay. And it will be used. And that crackpot will find his life easier. Hmm. He will get funded. They are very happy to see people running as hard as they can in the wrong direction. Yeah. And taking yeah. as many people with them as possible. Yeah. Because it takes away a potential source of problem, which is what would be people actually really waking up and looking at the right thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Disinformation. Yeah. Yeah. It's very useful. The yes. most useful thing. Yes. I would say. Because it's, if you threaten these guys, they actually hmm. get worse. You know, okay. it gives them validity. Yes. I feel sorry for all the guys that have gone and liquidated all their assets and run to the hills. You're mm. idiots. Mm. There was no need to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you've wasted your time. Preparations okay. are being made. Prop can you say anything more about that? Um, well, you all know. Everybody knows. Everyone knows about... But you uh, mean the underground bases? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's millions okay. and millions. I, 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 can't even, I don't know what the figure is for England. Mm. But um, or I don't know what the figure is for America either. It doesn't really interest me. But they have spent billions of dollars mm. um, finding places that can be tunnelled easily and then mm. going for it yes. in a way, you know. And what always amazes me is there are lorries going down there. Yeah, you know, and those lorries are driven by by guys that really should know better mm. and should be saying, "Well, you know where I went today, dear," mm. and they don't. They just don't. It's amazing. That's one thing that actually amazes me quite mm. often. People just don't. Yeah. I'm getting paid eight hundred dollars a day to do it. All mm. right. Mm. I won't talk about it. Yeah. This is something that's often occurred to me: the the tens of thousands of people involved in construction, and no one saying. If you that. want to look for a villain, they're it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they're one. They're, they're you guys, mm. and they're stabbing you right in the back for mm. money. Mm. Yeah, they're just taking the money, signing the non-disclosure agreement, and and just. Well, it's not even not, when we're talking about truck drivers and people like that, you're talking okay. about people that were met in prison. Okay. And when you get out, go and see them. And you can drive a pan-technican truck. Okay. There you go. All right. Uh, he's going to pay you five, six grand a week to do it. Hmm. And you just go here and drop the trailer and go back and get another one. Hmm. And you do that okay. twice a day and we'll pay you $800 to do it. Okay. And this is a guy that was in prison. All right, so we're not talking about people. Just because someone can drive a lorry, don't make him a dis decent blue-collar worker. I got gotcha. you. If you're looking for a villain in the whole thing, they're mm. it. And that's you lot. Mm. When you say you lot, you mean the people who are not part of the, the, the inside structure. Yeah, yeah. Just people who are taking the money and... And running. And running. Yeah. yeah. I believe it. And there's certain individuals in there that are mm. feathering their own nest. They're digging their own holes. Yes. You said that the guys who are heading for the hills are, are wasting their time, mm. or at least not for that reason. Is, yeah, there any, yeah. is there any reason why somebody... Heading for the hills and getting a little little farm and little community. Oh, well, if you're going to say farm, that's completely different. That's very right. wise. Why is that wise? Well, you could argue that as well. That could be very foolish because if I'm got anything to eat and you've got a farm, you're in serious trouble. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a farm, you better have some geographical... An island would be good. Mm -hmm. 
Why? What's happened? What's going because, to be coming down the line? Um, well, again, I, I believe that you know. Uh, no, it's not even. It's, it's, it's the wrong way to start that. Um, people know about companies, mm -hmm. and we ought to be very careful about naming those companies at this point mm -hmm. um, because it's actionable. All right, and it will be actioned. I okay. can assure you that has been put on the table. This is what's going to happen. If people, if the alternative media start using names of large companies, they are going to find things very difficult for them. They will be prosecuted. Uh, their finances will be destroyed. Yeah. Okay. So you're. So I'm not you're referring gonna, to food. Yes, you're talking to. So you're referring to large companies who are dealing with food. Yeah. Okay. Everyone knows here genetically what you're modified talking about. food. Genetically modified and food. And if you're a farmer in Wisconsin, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. And you've just jumped up in your chair and said, "Finally, someone's uh -huh. going to say." It. All right. So what? They've been living it for years. So what's going on there? This is a big one, isn't it? This yeah, is it is. It's, it is the, if you want to worry about something, that's what you want to worry about. Okay, so tell um, me... You know, and there's no time frame on this. This has been being rolled out for years. As I said, go to the Midwest. Mm -hmm. Ask any guy there who he's had to deal with and the tactics they've used when he didn't want to do it. There's a very, very small number of farmers that use their own seed now. Mm -hmm. And they are ridiculed, disenfranchised hounded, almost, well, criminalised hmm. in their own communities for mm -hmm. not towing that line. So what's all that about? Why is this happening? Well, now, I'll tell you straight away, you, you, immediately, as, as I said, that guy jumps up and says, yay, mm. there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of other people that mm. have been uh, brought into mm. a way of thinking that genetically modified crops is the only way to feed the population mm. in, in the, uh, the size it is. Right. And that equation works. It is, it yeah. does, that is the only way, if the population is the size it is. Okay. Yeah, so if we stop using genetically modified crops, we are evil because we are making the poor man starve. Right. Yeah, because it's the only way we're going to be able to produce enough crops for that poor man. Okay. Yeah, so immediately I'm a demon now because I've, I've, I've dared to cross the the genetically modified crop issue by saying that it's not good. Yeah, but straight away they'll yes. say, well, we, you know, you're, you're, you're evil because that, if you start making people think that or people take this video seriously, etc., and they start actively pursuing, with their, you know, in their state or their uh, county, um, there is a trial. Well, we're past mm. the trial stage now, aren't we? There are fields mm. um, that are being used uh, mm. like that. Um, they will say straight away, you know, this is a good thing because mm. it, it enables higher yield. Yes. Um, so therefore we will have surplus. So we can send it to people that need it. Yes. Yeah, because the population is the size it is. Mm. Yeah. So the only way, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and to dissent on it is evil because you're going to make people starve. Right. Okay. So... What you're saying is that this, that this is being sold as being a good thing because it's the way to it solve the problem. Thing. Mathematically, you wouldn't be able to argue it. It okay. is a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Until so, someone turns the switch off, uh, and right. it's a really bad thing. Yes. Turning the switch off, meant as a metaphor, mm. what's, what's the switch? Can you help people understand what that would be? Well, I, a farmer would understand what I've said straight away. If mm -hmm. I don't give you that seed anymore because you don't pay your bill. Okay. So I'm talking about something that disrupts that system that's yeah, been set Yeah, well, literally, you, 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 mm. you, I'm, I'm, you know, I educate you, but, mm. um, you know about, you know, they're buying seed that it will not, will not reproduce, yes? Yes, yes. Okay, when it's grown, that's that. Yes. And you're not allowed to store mm. seed that is able to grow and reproduce. Right. That's actually almost criminal now. Yes, yes. Yeah? They will hound you if you've got that kind of seed. Because they okay. want to stamp that kind of seed out, so you're totally dependent on what your what, what comes on a lorry every year. Yes. Okay. Is that farming? Yeah. Right. It so, takes away the very essence of farming. Yeah. So you're saying that then, if that structure is 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 interrupted in some way, then the whole house of cards comes down. Yeah. It sounds to me like what you're saying then is that this is planned and engineered. That this is going to happen. They're going to do this. Absolutely. All right. You said that without even thinking about it. It's like yes. Absolutely. It is going to happen. It is going to happen. Yeah. It's just a matter of when. But, yeah. And that'll be when the time's right.
when the time because tries. there is no time which is always makes me love people make predictions yeah they are in that 70 percent of the of uh, the alternative media that are complete idiots yes because as soon as someone you know, is an interesting thing for you as soon as someone puts a date on it we won't do it that's the end of it right right credibility yeah. out the window yeah it's a wonderful opportunity to destroy someone's credibility Brilliant. by mentioning a date we love it when they do that got it okay yeah that's easy to understand and a couple of your friends have done that yes yeah Right. And, of course, it hasn't happened. Right. Yes. Interesting. Back to the big scenario here. He's saying this is a big one. Mm. They're planning to disrupt the food supply and distribution. No, not disrupt it. Not disrupt it? Control it. Control it. Yeah. So if you Mm. um, live in Brazil, Mm -hmm. you're going to be all right. Okay. If you live um, Africa, Mm -hmm. not. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, they've already got problems anyway. It's probably a bad... Yeah, they've got, they got problems anyway. Well, there's parts of Africa that haven't. They're very, you know... Okay. Very you know, productive. How about Europe? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. What, so... And definitely America, of course. I'll take that as a yeah. Yes. Just to cut the chase here, what you're talking about is the deliberate um, creation of, of a state of famine where a lot of people are going to die. Is that right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that would be the result. That would be the result. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And this is what happens when you haven't got any food. You starve to death. Yes. Do you know... It's hard to find the geezer who's got his finger on the trigger, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, because it just looks like something... Yes. It, it just looks like something that's sort of happening. Don't take my word for it. Do your research. You'll see why... You know, it's there, Bill. Yeah. It's nothing hidden. Yes. This is something you said to me over and over again. It's all there. It's got to be. It's all there. Fair play. If it's you got... want to use your... Mm. Phrase? Yes. It's all out there for people who are smart enough to look yeah, and see. Yeah, because if you figure it mm. out, mm. you're accepting, aren't you? Okay. Especially so, if you can do something about it. Right. Do you know what the what the target figures for population reduction are? No. Okay. Are the, do those figures exist? I would presume so, yes. Okay. Because there's... Uh, well, I mean, to do any model, first of all, you know, mm. any, you know, you need a business plan, don't you, for anything? Right. And, of course, a lot of people watching this will know that the, the so-called target or, or the ideal population uh, number as stated on the Georgia Guidestones is 500, 500 million. Yeah. It looks like a manifesto. It's a manifesto in eight languages, uh, carved in, in stone, out in the open. Um, a lot of people have drawn attention to this. The 500 million figure has been drawn attention to over and over again. I've done that myself. It looks like a looks like a manifesto, you know, like this is what we're going to do. Then perhaps it is. Then perhaps it is. Yeah. Okay. If I said to you, you know what, I'm going to go and head for the hills in Ecuador and get myself a little community and a little organic farm, and we're going to have our own water supply and our own fruit trees, and chickens and ducks and rabbits, and we've and our own power generator, and we're going to sit there for. 20 years and we're all a happy family and everything's just going to be fine and we really want to do that mm-hmm. would you and you'd say well why did you do that then it sounds like a good idea that's the kind of thing you're saying right yeah 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 and if you're non-combatant mm. you'd probably be left alone yes because how many people are you talking about i mean seriously it's yes. very hard to do that with well, any real longevity if you ever really could look mm. into self-subsistence you'd mm. Very hard to do. Mm. We're not that animal anymore, really, are we? Oh yeah, we were much better off in the Victorian days. Mm. Yeah, we're in real trouble now. Knowledge is, is gone. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and that's no by no coincidence. That's when, yeah. when you see what mm. I'm saying. It's there. You know, you don't need to grow that anymore. We put it in the shelf. You know, go and buy cornflakes. You don't need corn. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. People. Yes, I know. It, 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 it's a so very. You lose the ability, don't you? It's a very clever game that's being that's being played. People are become they've become so dependent on a system that if the bubble bursts, they all they can do is stand there. All they can do is stand there in their underwear. Uh, hamburgers with legs. Yeah. All right. Hamburgers with legs. <laughs> I haven't done that one before. <laughs> okay. Can we then go on to why would they do this? Why would they do this? Let's put this in context for a moment here, and this is very important, because earlier on we were talking about the gentlemen who are calling the shots, who are making the decisions. We were referring to them together as um, respectable people who are operating with integrity, who believe that they're doing the right thing. 
They don't have an identical viewpoint about things, but mm -hmm. they're very much together. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else watching this would say, wait a minute, we're talking about m mass murder, mm. but h how do you well, fit this together? We're not really talking about mass murder, are we? No one's holding a gun, are they? All right. And who, who did it? You're talking about control, right. You're talking about controlling the conditions. Sequenced events. Yeah. Taking advantage of what yeah. happened. But you're talking about controlling situations so that a kind of Darwinian natural selection occurs. That's right, yeah. And the smartest and the fittest and the best problem solvers and the people who can see what's coming and the people who are maybe a lot of the people watching this video mm, because absolutely. they're smart enough to watch well, the video. Well, they're already waking up, aren't they? They're, they're already, already waking looking up. at what you're saying or yeah. the alternative media are saying. Yes. Mm. So there's a small group of people here, relatively small compared very small, with... Very small, really. Very small. Very small. Who, if they take heed of all of this... Are likely to make it through. This uh, is well, okay. I think that might be stretching it a little bit. More likely to make it. What would you mm, say? Well, as I said, we've been debilitated quite a lot. So it depends if that individual, someone that's got the ability mm. to self-survive, you know, can yes. farm, can do this, can do that. Yes. Well, then, yeah. They got yes. They got to jump on it now. They know they got to do it. And yeah. If they've got the ability, they can. Yes. But if you don't, then you're probably just as lost as everybody else, aren't you? you well, I mean, I'm in that category. So I don't know which end of a carrot is up. There you go. You know. But I'm smart enough to, to find someone that does. To find somebody who does and to work well with them. Okay, so in, 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 in that, some in that way. context, yes, they probably would have a better chance. Yes. If okay. you can look at it like that. But, but that, re that requires cooperation. And this is one of the traits which would be a good survival characteristic. Yeah, and you often find that people that are in, in, involved in the alternative media do tend to cooperate with each other a lot better. Yes. Because the angst isn't there. Right. You know, the anger, the, the, the uh, imprinted anger on everybody. Yes. You know, uh, that cop show. Right. Yes. Uh, this film. Yes, um, yes. His car's bigger than your car. Yes. All the stuff that we're being conditioned yeah, to... Look at my gold chain. Yes. Where's your paper? Who are you? All the, all, yeah. all the Hollywood Don't stuff. Don't do that to me. Yeah. I'm bigger than you. So yeah. that just creates a whole yeah. ethos, doesn't it, you know? Uh, right. And that's nothing new to anyone. Anyone knows it's more violent out there than it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where do you think that come from? But, yeah. Yeah. We know this, though. This is, this, is yes. no new, this is not new ground. We know the Every, media have been... Everybody knows, yes. Yeah, you know. Most of the people watching this won't watch a lot of television. No. A, that, a lot of them won't watch is, any. That is another trait, you find. Because they, yes. it, it makes them uncomfortable. You do find that certain individuals are predisposed to find that situation uncomfortable. Yes. Because the television has replaced the fire. We all used to sit around the fire and look at the different shapes, and those shapes arrive for... Every vampire story, horror story you go comes mm. from a fire, because mm. that's where storytelling started. You sat around the fire, and that was... It. And now the television's a fire. It flickers, it's yeah. light. Yeah. But the problem is, it's not, is it? No, sure. It's a medium. that Every, is a direct yeah. link to your brain. Yeah, yeah. You've seen people sitting there. Sometimes yeah. they sit there with their mouths open. Yeah. Literally, dribbling. Yeah. Because yeah. they're so engrossed in what they're looking at. And they're lost, those people. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, 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 say, let's give your viewers a, a task. Turn it off for 14 days. Mm. Nothing. Mm. Not even what you want to watch. Not even watch you. Mm. Nothing. Mm. And mm. see how they feel about mm. everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Their wife. The world will change is what you're trying to say. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I do believe that. Well, it's not... It's not and no one would do that. It's, yeah, yeah. it's not hard to believe, is it, really? You know? No. I want to get back to the point, if I may. The reason why they're doing this, this is a question, and this is what I've been able to figure out from the conversations that we've had, is that it's, it's a filter in place, or it's a bar to jump over, or it's a situation to survive, where some people will make it and most won't, being set up that way. Why would anyone do that? The only answer I can think of is because they're, they're trying to they're actually trying to not only cull the herd, if you think of a forest keeper with a deer in the forest, trying to make the forest a better place and trying to take, make the deer a healthier, stronger herd, part of that guy's job is to get a shotgun out and to pick some of the yeah, deer Yeah, a shotgun, out. not a nuclear weapon. Exactly. Because it's indiscriminate. You said that earlier on. So that, that's why that won't... The very argument you're making there is why that won't happen. That's, that's why I said what I said there. Yeah, because it's indiscriminate. Mm. Whereas 
what I hear you saying here is this: is that this setup with a with an engineered situation of famine and food shortage is that there will be certain people who will make it through, besides the people in the underground bases. On the surface, so to speak, you would have people who are equipped to solve problems, to grow food, to see things coming, to form communities, to work with each other, to troubleshoot, and also they'd be physically tough. Yeah, the ones that turn the television off. Uh, well, right. And then at the end of whatever happens, you've actually got a sort of... I mean, it's not a genetic You're asking upgrade. Why, they, why would they do that? Why would they do that? Are you able to say something about the human race being an experiment about optimization of the genome and that the and that and, and that the thirty three believe themselves to be the guardians of the experiment at this level in some way? Yes. What we're actually doing is trimming the fat off. Right. The the surplus. That shouldn't yeah. have been there in the first place. Yes. But was created by the machine itself. Yes. Um, now is a problem. Okay. In a previous conversation we had, I described it to you as like downsizing a company. Mm. When you've got a lot of, when actually because of automation that you've got in the factory, you can actually let go of the men. 90% of the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Or if you've got a company that's in difficulty. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we say the world's a company and it's in difficulty, mm -hmm. um, and it's not going to survive because financially it can't, it's got too big and slow. Okay. So in comes a liquidator, mm -hmm. and he tra chops off all the bits that don't really work, shrinks right. it down, puts the money from that process in the bank, and therefore the shareholders are very happy because you've now got a working concern that's lean, mean, and ready to go again. Of course, all this comes amid that sobering new toll on the economy, on American families. The new numbers tonight, unemployment now soaring to 14.7%. Tonight here, we are out across this country with families in food lines who never thought they would need this help. Here's Eva Pilgrim. They come by the thousands in every corner of the country. Americans out of work and now in need. Somebody trying to help us and get, get us through this crisis. In just the last month, 20.5 million Americans losing their jobs. Unemployment surging to a rate not seen since the Great Depression. Behind those staggering numbers, millions of Americans on the brink of financial ruin. Frustration mounting for those who still can't get unemployment benefits. I ran out of patience with that. I'm still one of millions. I do understand that, but it's ridiculous. Ed and Melissa Hamlet in Louisiana have been trying to get benefits for over a month. Probably 95% of the time you're calling, you're not getting to speak with anyone at all. Ed is also fighting lung cancer and now worries he won't be able to find a new job. You work to 20, 30 years to build up to where you can give your family the lifestyle that you're accustomed to now and it's all just taken away. In Florida, only 40% of people filing for unemployment benefits have seen them. Our Victor Okendo is in Miami. The line for food here in Miami snakes around this entire parking lot. 1,500 meals being given away to those who need it most. Many here tell me they still haven't received their stimulus checks. Across the country, 20 million people haven't gotten those checks. And people tell me they have either run out of money or will soon. Everyone I spoke to today says they want to work. Many of them are looking for jobs, any job that will allow them to provide for their families. The man in the street is uneasy. He doesn't yeah, yeah. know why he's uneasy. He knows there's yes. a monster coming, but doesn't even know what it is. If I don't give you that seed anymore because you don't pay your bill. Okay. So we're talking about something that disrupts that system. That's yeah, so you're saying that then if that structure is, 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 is interrupted in some way, then the whole house of cards comes down. Yeah. It sounds to me like what you're saying then is that this is planned and engineered, that this is going to happen, they're going to do this? Absolutely. But you're talking about controlling situations so that a kind of Darwinian natural selection occurs. That's right, yeah. No place is immune from coronavirus or the fear it carries. The thing we fear the most is what we don't know. Less than 10 miles away, they're getting ready for planting season. If we shut down, people, people don't eat. Staying afloat depends on their seasonal workers arriving from Mexico for planting season. So they're watching the coronavirus and the calendar closely. Our goal is to start planting the 8th of April, and we'd like to be done by June 1st. If we miss that window, we don't have another shot at it. And how would that impact your livelihoods? It'd be devastating. It'd be devastating.
This is the hidden danger behind Trump suspending immigration. Those farms that depend on migrant labor to plant and harvest crops are now in grave jeopardy. And while Walmart and Lowe's and Home Depot and the rest of the corporate infrastructure carries on without incident, despite numerous bottlenecks being in place in their facilities, outbreak after outbreak is being traced by government officials to meat processing plants. This email we got was from the United States Department of Agriculture and they were plowing up crops across the nation, dumping milk, chickens, and hogs. And I believed this email was to prepare us for that possibility with cattle. Why is it such a big deal where people are given a pushback of where the meat is coming from? As a consumer, you don't know what you're buying. It oppresses our prices because there's no competition for it. Why should the consumer care? We are importing beef and we are destroying our harvests at a time when people don't have jobs. Is it similar to what Walmart did to a lot of mom and pop shops and put them out of business? It's the same thing. We don't want the government getting in on our beef industry. Sonny Perdue, he's a globalist. Two of our four main beef packers are Brazilian owned and they've been caught in these fraudulent cases in their own countries. What do you think they're doing in the United States? Tyson Food, Cargill, JBS, National Beef, those are the four you're talking about. There will be a takeover of our industry and then a lot of these producers will become serfs to the oligarchy and I think that's where we're headed. We have to be able to feed the world at a profit. We can't do it at a loss. Who fills my shoes now in this time and age? Nobody. Only multinational corporations. Could you easily sell others to consider getting into your industry today. Unless you marry it or inherit it, you ain't gonna have it. It's financially impossible. Hey everybody, this is Shad Sullivan coming to you from the headwaters of Bitter Creek, Archer County, North Texas. We have to talk. State officials will be assisting to help identify potential alternative markets if a producer is unable to move animals and if necessary, advise and assist on depopulation and disposal methods. Ladies and gentlemen, we are plowing under vegetable crops from coast to coast. We are euthanizing millions of chickens. We are aborting sows and burying feeder pigs. We are dumping milk by the hundreds of thousands of gallons, and now they are preparing us to depopulate the fat cattle ready to harvest because of a bottleneck created by the effects of COVID. This thing hasn't been created by COVID, but the effects of COVID and the logistics therein. We are in trouble. Our food supply is in trouble and I am appealing to producers and consumers across the nation to start calling. Yesterday the first shipment of imported beef from the country of Namibia hit the shores of the United States of America and yet this morning they are telling us to prepare to euthanize harvest ready cattle. Am I the only one that sees a problem in this? It is time we get the American people back to work. It is time we get money flowing. It is time we get food on the shelves. Because if you're not concerned about this food supply problem, you better be. We have a huge supply and demand of food across this nation. We can feed the world ourselves and yet we're destroying our harvests. At the same time we are importing beef from other countries, beef that is less regulated than our beef, less safe, not as high quality of product and yet it's happening. At the same time they are preparing for us to euthanize our harvests. Does that make sense to America? For the last 10 years, we have been uh, pressed to be sustainable. I've said all along, sustainability is a fraud. And right now, we're being forced 
to destroy our harvests. That doesn't sound like sustainability to me. It is time we get back to work. It is time uh, the American people force uh, the government to listen to us. We are of, by, and for the people. This is not Nancy Pelosi's country. This is not Donald Trump's country. This is your country, and you're going to go hungry. We must get regional and local packing houses up and going. Do we have to have those big, big packing plants? You bet we do, and they need to be running right now. You as a consumer are in trouble. My dad told me years ago the best thing that would happen to America is if everybody had to sit in the dark, cold, and hungry, and that would wake them up. Well, I think it's coming. We're in a dangerous position, ladies and gentlemen. We need to get going on this today, not tomorrow, today. You need to be calling your legislators. We need to be opening up the country. Your food supply is in danger. Ranchers are going broke every day. We're doing all we can to stay here. We are in crisis in America. This is a crisis. This is a national crisis. And everybody's just sitting back enjoying their time off, enjoying that $1,200, not knowing that overnight you're going to go hungry. It's coming. My apologies for my tone. I'm worried about my country. My friends, the storm is here. Do you see the truth right in front of you? The storm clouds are all around us. The rain has begun to fall. The wind is howling. The time is late. The night is far spent. Are you going to get on the ark? For those of you who may not be religious, may not be versed in what the Bible says, in the book of Genesis, God told a man named Noah to build an ark and to prepare for the flood waters because he was going to destroy all of mankind. And afterwards, God gave Noah a rainbow to signify that he would never flood the earth in that way again and destroy all of mankind. But the truth is, this earth will be destroyed again one day, but it's going to be destroyed by fire. When Jesus was here on this earth, he said, as in the days of Noah, so it shall be. And these are the times that we're living in, the days of Noah, where wrong has become right, right has become wrong, up has become down, down has become sideways. The love of many has waxed cold. Our conscience has become seared. We've become reprobates in our sin. We don't feel conviction of sin anymore because sin has become normalized throughout society in such a way that we overlook it completely and it's become a part of us. We no longer feel two ways about it. We are singular in our sin and our eyes are on our own passions, pursuits, and lusts. But the time is late. The storm clouds are all around us. Do you not hear the voice of God crying out to us to come home, to find life in Jesus, to confess with your mouth that He's Lord and to believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, to know that the Son of God King of kings and Lord of lords. He died on a cross for you. He was raised on the third day. He's coming back. And when he comes back, the storm clouds are going to be under his feet. And he will destroy this world with fire. And he will rebuild. He's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. And those who are his, we're going to reign with him forever. But you have to choose wisely. You have to make your choice known. Are you going to live in the pleasures of sin and be a friend of the world? Or are you going to turn your back on that sin forever and walk towards the face of God and find life in Jesus? There is no other option. A friend of the world is an enemy of God. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, you can be made a friend of God. You can be reconciled to the Father. He'll wrap you in a robe of righteousness. The storm is here. Make your choice. Make your choice. Repent for your sin. You will not miss anything in that life of sin. You are not going to regret running to Jesus and finding life in Him. You will not find peace in this world. There is no peace for the wicked. Without Jesus, that's what we are. But mercy has been extended to you. There is a power moving through this land that's not of God. And it's full of darkness. And hearts and minds are being taken into this hurricane of confusion. We can't see, we can't hear. All we know is wickedness. But I'm here to wake you up and to say the light of Christ can pick you up from that pit, can help you to see once again the truth, can help you to hear the voice of God, can help you to know His peace in a way that you've never known. You have to make your choice. Repent for the kingdom of God has come near to you.